So we're in a series called Finish. Somebody say finish. finish. Let's activate this thing. Thank you, young Jeremiah. Appreciate it. And uh, young Jeremiah, I want to give you $100, man. Yeah. You're welcome. God incentivize obedience. God incentivize obedience. All right, let's go. You are the seed of the word of God. I'm getting ready to sow into you that which God has given me. And I need everybody to listen up real quick. We're not going to be here long. And I don't care how long you've been saved. I need you to dig in and listen into the word of God as if you've heard it for the first time. One of the things you have to understand that when you and I repeatedly go to church, it is very easy to hear with our heads and not our hearts. So we're in a series called Finish. Somebody say finish. Finish. And as it relates to finish, finish means complete. Somebody say, I, I am a completer. I am a completer. Sometimes we have so many things that we leave undone, not completed. And in this uh, month of mental illness, one of the things you will find out which may be causing some challenges with some of us mentally is because you have so many windows open on your mainframe that you can't sleep, you haven't finished anything. So you got a bunch of things running in your mind because you didn't finish it. So one of the things God wants you and I to understand that we are finishers. Somebody say, I'm a finisher. finisher. One of the reasons I ask you to repeat things is because it activates your brain. So now we're listening to the Word of God, and in this series called Finish, today's title is called Works, W-O-R-K-S. It is not a sin. Somebody say, work is a good thing. <laughs> Somebody say it again, work is what? <laughs> work is a good thing, but we're not talking about senseless, unintentional, aimless. We're talking about work that you're called to do. D did you know that God has a work for each of us to do? One of the challenges, talking about mental health, is literally working on things you're not supposed to be working on. Mm. Trying to do things through ambition. Trying to start a church through ambition. Through uh, trying to be something. Trying to satisfy something you didn't get at home. So a lot of times people start churches and they build them because now in Western culture, you can build a church, but you can't fill it with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Say that again. And a lot of times, man, we have this duplication. We have people doing what other people are doing. That's right. And because we know how to build a business, we think we know how to build the kingdom. And it's real simple in this series called Finish. Everybody say finish. finish. So I want to look at a few things in my, my work today. There's a work that God has given me today. All right, y'all ready? And then you can evaluate whether I did a good job. My work today is for God, the Lord Jesus told me to tell my people who they are. Tell my people who they are. And he reminded me again, one of the things that seemed to really, as I read and continue to read about Jesus, one of the things that seemed to perturb him or bother him the most was how far humanity had fallen from their ability to dominate this earth. And to dominate the earth, the first person you got to dominate in the earth is yourself. The ability to tell yourself, uh-uh-uh, and the ability to tell yourself, this is what we're going to do. Everybody got it? You were created to dominate the earth. So everybody working. You're supposed to be working, but you're supposed to be working on what God asked you to work on. Do you know if you'll get the word of God in you, Jeremiah, the word of God will work in you. That's why you want to get the word and not other people's opinions. You want to get the word of God. I read this on our intercessory prayer yesterday. And I want to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, please. And I want you to put your eyes on this. And I want to find out if you get shocked when you read this. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want to start at verse number 1. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He's calling them brothers because he's communicating to them as family members. He's an apostle. That means he's established churches, and he's seen God, Acts chapter 9, and he's been sent to establish churches, which are kingdom outposts, to let them know uh, how to live victoriously on the earth. Here we go. And I, brother, when I came to you, Paul, came not with excellency of speech. In other words, I didn't go to speech therapy. I didn't learn how to come to St. Louis and pronounce all the words with an R. <laughs> I didn't come through man's training. I didn't come through man's inventions. I didn't come with excellency of speech, excellency of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. In other words, I didn't come trained as a professional showing you the witness of God. Next verse. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him what? Crucified. And I was with you in weakness. In other words, you saw I wasn't all that perfect in my talk. But the words I smoke, spoke were powerful. I may have sluttered or slurred a few things. But the word of God I gave you was backed by God of heaven. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of whose wisdom? Man's. There we go. I believe we're getting saved, but we're building our lives on man's wisdom. My speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit of God and what? Power. Somebody say power. power. That, come on, everybody read this. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the what? That your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ, sh does not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of who? Yeah. The power of who? Yeah. So I am commissioned. My work today is to tell you who you are. Because one of the things as it relates to who we are, I realize we can stop storms. Yes. Amen. We can heal bodies. We can forgive sins. You can heal and reconcile any relationship you're dealing with. You can be reconciled to God. You literally have the ability to love who you are as a creation. You get to know who you are. And what if I told you before you got in your mother's womb, you were already existing? And just in your mother's womb, you were formed. But don't believe me unless I show you in the scriptures. So the title today is Works. Somebody say Works. Works. My work today is to make sure I remind you as to who you are. So put up the first point because I'm going to give you the answer right ahead, right ahead of time. Put up the first point, please. We haven't put up the first point. What's happening? The first point, the, that's not it. The first point is... I am a son of God. I am what? I can't hear you. I am what? Put up John chapter 1 verse 12, please. John's gospel is the only gospel out of four. Pastor, what? What do you mean when you say gospel? If you're new to church, a baby Christian, understand the gospel means good news, but when we say gospel, we're talking about the four books, first four books in the New Testament, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and who? John. John, out of the four gospels, is the only one that tells us about who Jesus is prior to him being born on the earth. 
we now know that there is an invisible person who was existing the whole time before he got in Mary's womb. So what we're going to find out is that you being born again, meaning you're in a kingdom and you're under a king that you can't see. If you get under him and listen to him, you are dominate in the kingdom you can see. A lot of us, whoever sit next to you, wake them up. Because if I was the devil, I'll put you to sleep. I mean, look at somebody right now. Look them in the eyes and say, you look like you're getting ready to go to sleep. <laughs> so I need you to say, I am what? A son of God. Come on. Come on. We got to get this. Come on. Come on. Put it in the chat. I am a what? Son of God. Son of God, that has to do with who you are as it relates to dominant. That's male and female. Everybody got it? But as many as received him, this John, John starts off with Jesus' existence before he got in Mary's womb. He's telling you about this invisible king that you didn't know about until he was revealed in Scripture. Because God is invisible and you can't physically see him. He has to reveal things to you, open your uh, eyes of your understanding spiritually so you can understand who God is and understand who you are. You are a son of God. You are able to dominate this earth because your Lord is over the prince of this world. Your Lord Jesus is over Satan. But as many as received Jesus, to them gave Jesus, gave them the power to become what? The sons of God, even to them that do what? Believe on his what? Name. But as many, go back, as many as received who? Jesus. As many as received him. In other words, the word will be preached today. You heard the word preached today. But the question is, have you received Christ? He's the Messiah. The Jewish people were waiting on this Messiah to come and waiting on the Christ to come. Now he shows up. Now he has, God always has to have a human witness. He sends John, who's in the power of Elijah, because God always confirms and he always speaks the truth. And the Bible is perfectly organized, perfectly. It does not contradict itself. I've said this before. The only time I've said that the Bible contradicts itself or that man wrote the Bible is when it's asking me to do something I don't want to do. Amen. That's, right. That's usually when I come with problems. Everybody got it? But if you will look into the perfect law of liberty, as James says, and get first to know who you are, have you received Jesus Christ? Have you received him? Have you submitted your life to him? Some of us, we've received them, but we've kept them on the outskirts of certain areas of our lives. And the certain areas of our lives, even though we're doing well in some areas, the certain area that we've kept them out that we're still struggling in is disrupting and causing a lack of peace in the other areas. Am I in the right place? Yes. Yes. Am I? Yes. We can't change something until you acknowledge it. You go to the doctor and you got this faith talk. And I'm talking about faith talk. It's not faith. It's just faith talk. So you go to the doctor. You, got to, you have a dislocated ankle. You go to the doctor. You say, doctor, I'm, I'm healed. So the doctor will say, why are you here? That's faith talk. No, you will receive your healing. But if you go into the doctor, you need to know. You're gonna, you, it sounds like you want to find out if you can get help with your healing through the doctor. So the doctor needs to know what's up. Exactly. Yes. What's happening? Where are you hurting? He doesn't need all your faith talk. He needs to know in the natural, my right ankle is dislocated. Okay, now we got something to work with. But God needs you to be honest with him. In your area of struggle, your area, I've had areas of struggle. I've had areas in my life as a pastor where I felt like I was captive. Amen. I really have. That I felt like, man, I was struggling. 
It was a fight. It was like I was entrapped in something and didn't understand it. Anybody been there? I see some of y'all like, yeah. I'm asking a question. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Right? Yes. But just because you start out that way don't mean you have to stay that way. Yes. Come on. Come on. The good news is Jesus is Lord. That means he's Lord over whatever you're dealing with. Amen. And the Son has come to set us free. And that's free of everything. That's outside the will of God. And free to be who we call to be. Not free to be the perverted you, who you think you are. That society is reaffirming a lie that you're really not what you think you are. So in, the, in one thing, when you come together... Woe be unto the pastors who, even while they're dealing with their flaws, even though we need a high priest ourselves, woe be unto me if I cease not to teach and proclaim the gospel. That if you and I continue to live a certain way, you could be saved, but be a miserable believer. Somebody say, I'm ready for joy to get back in my house. No, we need to say that again. I'm ready for joy to be back in my house. And the house I'm talking about is your body. But as many as received him, as many as received him, to them, he gave power. That word power means to write the right or the privilege. The right or the privilege. The right or the what? Privilege. To become not being coming. To what? Become. That sounds like immediate. To become. He gave the right and the privilege because he got authority to give the right and the privilege. To become who? Sons of God. Even to them that believe on the name of Jesus. Everybody see that? Who gave them the right and the privilege? Jesus. Everybody got it? But you you have to do what? Receive what? Receive him. Come on, it's right there. But as many as what? Receive him. Are you as many? Yes. But have you really received him? As many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that do what? Believe Believe on his name. So what he's saying is, if you will give your life, if you would declare that Jesus is the Lord of my life, at that moment and submit your life to him as Lord, he's saying instantaneously you become, not tomorrow, Not when you do everything right, but immediately you become what? The sons of God. How how, how fast? Immediately. How fast? Immediately. So how many have received him? So that tells me I am a son of God. All right, we're going to stay here for a second. I need, let me, let me just teach this section. Because what ends up happening is because of what you're experiencing, you think that you're not who you are. And a lot of times we are continually experiencing the wrong things because we don't acknowledge and recognize who we are. So the first thing, this section here, I need you to first say, but you're not a parent. You're a person. And this declaration is to remind your brain, remind your thoughts as to who you really are. Because when you get in certain environments, it's easy to forget who you are. And sometimes you got to remind yourself of who you are. What am I doing here? I'm a child. I'm a son of God. Let me get out this house. You saw how the Lord did somebody business and didn't say nothing. Y'all see how he just wiggled it in there, right? 
So I need y'all to say this. Let's, let's say this. I am, I am a son of God. Let's say it again. I am. I am. Let's just stop there for a second. I am. I am. I am. I am. So every time you do a confession, which your I, you make it personal, every part of you begin to line up with it. Now, until you fully have gotten this down in here and got it out your head, you need to keep confessing it. And every day you wake up, every day it comes to your mind, Holy Spirit say, I am a son of God. And every time you say you're a son of God, you need to remind yourself that means you dominate the earth. That means you dominate whatever the enemy is trying to do against you. That means you, that means you dominate that anger. You dominate that vice. You dominate relationships in a good way. You dominate your body. Sickness and disease, you dominate. Poverty, you dominate. You're first to forgive because you dominate your emotions. You you dominate your soul because you are a son of the most high God. So let's do some homework. If you put up uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Who's doing this? God. Who's he creating right now? Man. That be who? Yes. Come on, tune in. I, I, I sincerely know for myself and for many other believers, we've not taken the time to really look in this mirror of the word to find out who we are. And I'm going to tell you all through a strange thing, and I, I shared this, um, I hear God and God teach me in strange ways, in ways that most of you all may say that can't be God. Because when, you, when you're growing up in church, you, you have a tendency to limit God into whatever's being taught in that church. Instead of realizing God dominates and speaks in all situations. I'm going to share with you guys how I gain even more of a higher respect for the Lord Jesus. For his power and dominance and for me to submit unto him and be just as dominant. What if I told you how? And I've shared shared it on uh, two weeks ago on the uh, Wednesday study. I was listening to Lil Wayne doing an interview. And Lil Wayne, let me, let me stop here. For all of you all that seem to have a problem when I mention influencers in the earth, and a lot of times it's older believers who stuck in their ways. Just go read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and you'll find out Paul said, I became all things to all men that I might by all means save some. I don't prescribe to Lil Wayne's music. But when it comes down to lyrics, he's a genius. And if we can pray for those influencers to get saved, that God will give them the words to put them together like they do that lead to darkness, man, what could they do (laughs) with light? Stop cursing darkness and turn on the light. Now, why is that important? Because he was given this gift before he got here. That's why he says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You have to understand before you got in your mother's womb, there was already a work for you to do. For me, one of the works I was to do was to play football. Before I got in my mother's womb. Why? Because God knew that football would be a game that all of a sudden would ascend and dominate all the professional sports league. When I was growing up, at first it was baseball, then basketball. Now, football is dominated. Well, he knew he was going to need some of his kids in these environments to be able to listen to him lead others to Christ who would be in these environments. So this young man I mentioned in Lil Wayne, how did you understand Jesus better through Lil Wayne? Because Lil Wayne was invited, Tirza, to Saudi Arabia. And the, 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 the crown prince 
who wants to modernize Saudi Arabia a little more. Because they used to have what's called religious police that would ride around Saudi Arabia as his dad, the king, who's the king, the young prince wants to modernize it and lax it a little, not let total secular come in, but get off the people's back, give them a little breathing room. So he start bringing in artists like Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is telling this story. I'm still talking about the power of Jesus Christ and how this story began to help me understand this king that we serve who literally has the authority to open doors, close doors, has the authority to promote you or give you a demotion, has the authority to heal you or let you stay sick, has the authority to give you influence in any area of endeavor where he's called you to be, has the authority to tell you your purpose, has the authority to guide you through your heart by leading you as to what you're supposed to be doing, has the authority to keep you living and keep you strong instead of keeping you living but yet you stay weak. He is his excellency. And I had to start seeing it that way. Because we call him Lord, but we, he's really just Jesus to us. He really don't influence us the way he's supposed to. He's not a person to be played with. So I'm listening to Lil Wayne. He say he goes into Saudi Arabia on his private plane. He's not used to going through TSA on a private plane. You don't have to go through where you got to take off your underwear. No, we're just joking. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough group here. Boy. <laughs> That's a joke, right? You know, where you got to take off your shoes and all that kind of stuff, right? So he's, he wasn't used to that. So he, got, he gets off his plane. He's in Saudi Arabia. They get off. He's getting ready to go. He's thinking he could just get off his private plane as other private airports, and you don't have to go through TSA. So... He goes into Saudi Arabia, and they tell him, you got to go. We got to bring your bag through the, the scanning. His bag has all his jewelry in it. The jewelry is worth over $25,000. So the, the people at the TSA told him, well, you, if it's over $25,000, we have to declare it. Lil Wayne said, forget all that stuff. He, in, in other words, he, he said, I'm no nonsense. So once they told me that, all that hassle stuff, he said, forget all that. He said it in other words. I cleaned it up. He said, forget all of that. I don't need this. And got back on his plane and told his pilots, I know y'all tired, but we got to get out of here. I ain't going to do all of this. Somebody gets on his plane before he takes off, and he said to him, quote, unquote, that's how he said it, quote, unquote, that's how Lil Wayne said, quote, unquote, his excellency said he heard about your inconvenience. He didn't know about it. And he said, he's so upset. He says, please come back through and you won't be hassled at all. <laughs> Lil Wayne says, tell his crew, he says, all right, is that it? He said, because if I go in and I have any hassle, I'm out of here. He said, okay. And he said, yes, you go and won't nothing happen. I'm telling this story because this story reminded me of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it reminded me, if we don't understand this, we don't realize the authority he has and the authority he will release in you. So Lil Wayne gets off, got his stuff. When he goes through, everybody in that TSA was hassling him before, were like this. Because his excellency told him, told them, you don't insult my guest. So when he goes through, straight through nothing, his assistant says the, his excellency wants to come by your hotel room for five minutes. He's so sorry. Once again, this reminded me of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what you see in the earth realm what you see in the earth realm is a visual of the power of the kingdom that you and I in. And you'll get a better understanding how it works. Those people are under that crown, his excellency authority, and they were told, stand down. And they were like this. 
and you telling me you got a problem with a boss. Come on. Once I started realizing that, uh, Coach Chico, I realized, and you got a problem with children? And His Excellency? No, you got a problem with His Excellency. Because if you get your relationship with His Excellency, right, you'll be able to influence your children and your spouse and your bosses. Not with that religion. We're talking about power. As many as received Him, to them gave the right and the privilege, the power. We talking about the power. His Excellency shows up in his room, and he says, "I'm so sorry." And when Lil Wayne was telling the story, he said he was mad. He used another word. He was real mad. And he came to my room. He says, "I'm I'm so sorry. I can't believe they're hassling you over twenty five thousand dollars." He said, "I have a gift for you. It's worth more than twenty five thousand." And then he tells his little homie, "Show him the gift." And he opened it, and it was a Frank Mueller watch. And Lil Wayne said, I know that's probably over 25 grand. <laughs> I'm telling the story, but I'm pointing you back to Jesus. Because we don't respect him. We don't respect him. And them rappers over in Saudi Arabia, they can't go over there with no weed now. They can come do a concert and all that, but you get the weed, they're going to arrest you. Why? It's a sovereign place. We get lax because we got free speech. <laughs> Thinking your free speech won't cost you. This is a funny story to me. But if you understand the things that God is taking you through that you keep struggling with and you don't realize the enemy is trying to get you not to overcome it so you can walk in condemnation and lack confidence in the areas God has called you to dominate. See, once you understand why the enemy is trying to mess with you, why he's trying to distract you, he doesn't care about your religion. He doesn't care about how many scriptures you memorize. If you don't understand the power and how it works, anointing is sweatless. It's the sweatless ability to dominate your area. That means it's God's spirit coming on you because it's been unleashed because you've submitted to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So his excellency is in the room. He gives him a Frank Mueller watch. And then he was getting ready to walk out. He, then he came back to Lil Wayne. He says, oh, the one thing. Lamborghini or Ferrari? I'm so sorry. Lil Wayne said he thought he was asking him which one is the best, Lamborghini or Ferrari. And Lil Wayne said, Lamborghini. And then the, the uh, crown prince said, what color? And then Lil Wayne said, oh, you mean for me? Because <laughs> at first he just thought it was a matter of fact question, like which one is, is, is greater? Because he thought he was flexing. He thought the prince was like, you know, I got Lamborghini or uh, Ferrari. Which one you want to drive to the concert in? And then he said, once he said, well, what color? He said, you mean one for me? He said, then Lil Wayne said, then black. Bet, be at your house in three weeks. And then once Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne realized that he was real about this vehicle, he said, uh, all right, in a Lam make it a Lamborghini truck. I heard they got some new ones. <laughs> Delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. And he'll give you desires of your heart. That man, Lil Wayne, said, he said in his own colorful language, Jeremiah, he said, my truck showed up in three weeks in Miami. That's a crown prince of Saudi Arabia who has limited power in Saudi Arabia. You serve the king who's over every one of them.
He rules all. You're made in his image. You can get rid of, I can get rid of every bad habit that they tell him we, we can. The trauma, whatever you have, who hasn't been through trauma? You live in this world, you're going to get some trauma. But if you're not park on it, if you're not let anybody let you soothe it, if you will begin to say so in the name of Jesus. And if you need a therapist, you need a counselor, by all means, go. Talk with them. But don't let them put you on a retainer. You are there to be set free. You are not there for continual repeated fees. Jesus asked the man, he said, do you want to be well? He had been in condition for 38 years. Jesus said to him, do you want to? So the first thing is, you want to hold on to this? You want to be the victim? You want everybody to feel sorry for you? Or do you want to come to Christ who the sun sets free? Do you want to come to the one who got your Lamborghini? (laughs) And the guy who was doing the interview, he jokingly, he said, once Wayne realized that the prince was serious, he said, when 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 the prince asked him Lamborghini or Ferrari, he should have said Lamborghini and Ferrari. (laughs) And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. You can learn about God through looking at what he's created, looking how countries like that exist. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth, over the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. Keep rolling with me. Next verse. So God created man in his what? own image and the image of God created what he him male and what female. created he what Damn. notice male and what female. female any more questions any more questions by the way he has not formed a human yet he has not formed them from the dust of the ground yet They have been created in the spirit. He hasn't formed from the dust of the ground yet. Before you got in your mother's womb, you were already in the kingdom. You were created by the king. That's why you read John chapter 1. You'll find out all things were created by him. Without him, nothing was made. Talking about Jesus. You literally are a spirit being. That's why you can contact things in the spirit. That's why you'll be hearing more about metaverse. You'll hear more about things that are going beyond. Because society, the prince of the air, no time is up. So he's getting ready to show people more and more how to influence people with their minds. Because when Satan, when Satan caused Adam to fall, Adam now lived out his soul. And if you want to dominate a soul-led person, mess with their mind. I know I'm shooting bullets better than y'all, y'all talking. I just feel like I got two gun Charlie up here. I'm telling you. One, one scripture and we out. How we doing, family? I said, how we doing? One last scripture and we out. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was a what? Living soul. First man, Adam, was living out his soul. When he sinned, he began to live his life out his soul. The soul is the emotions. How many of us living out emotions? I just feel this. Right? I feel like starting a church. You don't feel like starting a church. Right? You don't, you don't feel like it. I, and I've just, I'm, I'm, I'm so concerned with people doing that. So the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He was living out his soul. Soul man. Soul. We got soul. We talk a lot about the soul. 
the mind, will, and emotion, living out all what you think, what you think, what I think about it. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, meaning he brought your, the real you back alive to your father. Now you could discern stuff that's not seen. Now you could pick up on things that's being said that's not when a person's mouth not open. Because the real you is a spirit, and you're able to discern what God is saying while nobody else is talking. Why? Because you're a spirit. And your spiritual king, Jesus, has the ability to open doors, close doors, give you a Lamborghini, take a, a guinea from you. Why? Because he's the king. So we will move forward. Would you put up slide number one, please? We didn't get it right the first time. Put it up. Everybody say it. These are my three points. First one is, come on, everybody say it. Next point. Next slide. That's the next slide. Y'all ready? This slide number two. I am a son of God. Everybody got that? Put up slide number three. What pastor talked about? That means you have access to you dominate. And I'm telling you, a lot of this has to do with our minds not being renewed or when we in situations, not telling our minds what to think and what you're not going to think in a situation. You're not going to give up. You're not going to let other people run your life. You're not going to let people believe or tell you that they can lead your life or they can stop you. They can't. Hallelujah. Was this good?